In today's video, I'm going to be taking an emulator device and picking 10 random games. This is fun to do when you're kind of indecisive on what to play, or maybe you want to experience something new, and this is a great way of doing that. Essentially, pick 10 random games from it and give you my thoughts, whether it's a thumb up, whether I'd play it again, or a thumb down, I would avoid it and never play it again. So sit back, relax. Here we go. First up is No Rules Get Fat for the Game Boy Advance. And this is a extreme skateboarding with a platforming mix. It's kind of has an edgy cartoon to it. You're essentially taking out aliens, five levels from what I read online. Uh, the physical copy of this came with a fingerboard. Uh, the best thing about this game is the soundtrack. Not my cup of tea. Uh, this game is too difficult to be enjoyable from initial playing. Um, I just found myself kind of dying over and over again. You have these records that are throughout the levels where you can get, I guess, extra moves. Unfortunately, it doesn't tell you how many you have to pick up. So there's no way, unless you're like reading the manual, uh, physical manual to find out really what's going on here. Uh, this is not my type of game. Uh, while I like platformers, I don't like the combination of what they tried here. So aside from the soundtrack, I'm gonna avoid this thumbs down. Next up is a blast from the past and this is Congo Bongo. And this was made by Sega and it's kind of like an isometric Donkey Kong. This came out in 83, I do believe, had numerous console ports. Uh, many of them varied in quality. Many of them weren't as good as the arcade counterpart. Um, I like this one. You know, up to four levels, kind of challenging. You know, you're, you're essentially trying to uh, various obstacles to avoid to uh, you're trying to get an ape who set fire to your tent and you're avoiding numerous enemies per stage I was only able to get to the second stage in this initial play if you're a console collector you can unlock this in a PlayStation portable of the Genesis collection as well as the 360 and PS3 version of Sonic's ultimate Genesis collection I love that they did that and offered this Fairly obscure platformer arcade game. It's a thumbs up for me. I definitely would play this again. Has challenging gameplay. First couple Home Alone movies, not bad. Family enjoys them. But the NES version of Home Alone 2, oh man. I know that this game borrowed heavily from Simpsons, which it uh, based the, I think the engine from, but I did not enjoy this game whatsoever. Too difficult to play. Not fun, didn't like the graphics, didn't like the sound. Just a whole lot going on, trying to recreate something from the movie. And it just doesn't come together. I don't know how many levels there are in this, but you know, playing this, I haven't played this in years. Saw so many copies of this unwanted on rental shelves, you know, while going to rent NES games at video stores. I can see why now. Really, after playing this, this is a thumbs down for me. Avoid this turd. It's not good at all. Beauty and the Beast from the Intellivision may look like a simple Donkey Kong knockoff. You know, it kind of has the same premise, but you know what? Really, really like this one. This is a well-done action game for the Intellivision. And you know what? Uh, these hearts fall from the sky. It gives you temporary invincibility. There's several stages. Pretty challenging, though. So, you know what, you can quickly play a game, so this is a fun game if you don't have a lot of time to play. And you know what, really like this game. Uh, for those that aren't aware, Magic was an excellent uh, company that, you know, kind of competed with other third-party companies such as like Activision. And while it didn't make as many games, their quality of titles for several retro platforms is excellent. Highly recommend this for the Intellivision. It is one of the better titles that they offered on the Intellivision and one of my favorite. I did have a lot of uh, experience with this as it was shown to me. It's a thumbs up and an excellent title to check out. Definitely worth playing. Peter Pan, the motion picture event is yet another movie tie-in. And you know, the Game Boy Advance had a ton of these. Uh, I didn't see the 2003 Peter Pan movie and I've never played this game and what do I think of it very forgettable you know uh, there's countless different Peter Pan 
uh, video game tie-ins to the character and movies and cartoon. And you know what? This one to me just falls short. Small characters, uh, not great hit detection. I just found the action sequences to be dull of what I played. Uh, you know what? This definitely is just not my type of game. You know what? I know they're just there's so many different types of games that are movie tie-ins for the Game Boy Advance. And you know what? Uh, this one is just kind of middle of the road. It's a negative for me. I won't come back and play this. Next up is Chesterfield for the Famicom. Another game I haven't played ever before. And you know what? Kind of an uninspiring action side scroller. Uh, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Zelda 2. Uh, just kind of dull and boring. And so uh, I just didn't find myself really enjoying this. You know, there's so many other uh, amazing side-schooling action games for the NES. You know, I have uh, an extensive NES collection. And, you know, I, it was kind of cool that I've never played this game before. So it's kind of neat when you do this, you get to experience games you might have not ever played. But I don't know what I've played so far. You know, it's at the beginning, so it's kind of has, has an uninspiring beginning to it. Kind of hard to put words to this game other than just dull and uh, forgettable. Uh, the action sequences to me uh, are leaving me wanting something else. Thumbs down for me. This next one puts a smile to my face and it's a fairly obscure arcade game, Marvel Land. And this is the arcade version. There is a Sega Genesis and Mega Drive version of the game, which uh, there is some differences. The I do believe the home console port has more stages. The arcade one looks a bit, a little bit better, a little more colorful, but you know what? This is a fun platformer. Uh, for Sega Genesis, you definitely could do worse. It was an early release, I do believe around 1990. And so if you're looking for kind of an oddball game that was ported to the Genesis, check it out. Otherwise, play the arcade game, not bad. Uh, my sound's a little bit messed up on this, emulating this, but you know what? Uh, a fun a fun game, and I haven't played much of the arcade at all. So, thumbs up for me. I definitely would go back and want to play this more. All right, finally, a very solid release, Wild Guns. And you know what? I haven't played the Super Nintendo one in a bit. I did play Wild Guns Reloaded, which came out on the PS4, Switch, and Steam. And that's a fantastic update to this cult classic. But you know what? Uh, going back to the original, no problem with that. So it's kind of a Western meets like science fiction with some steampunk punk elements. And you know what? This one's a lot of fun. One to two players, uh, lots of fun action style game. Uh, you know what? This is kind of a shooting gallery aspect to this. But you know what? I haven't played this in a while, but you know what? Going back to it, I can see why many people really enjoy this game. As you know, it's very different. Um, you know what, the, the publisher was uh, known to, to release some cult classic games, and you know what, uh, Wild Guns is up there. World's Scariest Police Chases is kind of an underappreciated PlayStation game. Kind of came late in the life cycle of the PlayStation, 2001 I do believe. Multiple different vehicles and weapons you can choose, and there's many, many different missions and game modes. And you know what, I like this one. I, what I've played of it, you know, I, I didn't play much of this, uh, you know, games like this. I, I was more of a driver guy. Um, the original driver was a game that I played quite a bit, but I didn't own this back in the day. And as I was collecting PlayStation, I did pick up a copy of this. You can still get it relatively cheap, but if you just want to play the game, well, here you go. I'm chasing bad guys. And you know what? Uh, I found the gameplay to be you know entertaining and with all the different modes and vehicles and stuff i think there's enough to go back and play this again it's thumbs up for me i definitely would go back and play this m&m's break em is actually a remake from the same company that did the awesome gem smashers for multiple different platforms including uh, game boy advance 3ds uh, xbox one switch and more um, what do I think of this game? This game is just okay. Um, you know what? If I didn't play Gem Smashers, 
I would probably want to go back and revisit this, but this game just makes me want to go back and play Gem Smashers. So it's a, it's a thumbs down for this one. Play Gem Smashers instead. So the 10 games that I showed today, what did you think? Did you like playing them? And as always, thank you so much for visiting my channel. If you like what you see, consider hitting that like and subscribe button and clicking the bell as I'm uploading videos every week. You folks are wonderful and beautiful. Let's keep it positive. This is the immortal John Hancock, and you take care.